Hey guys, it's Dr. Elawad from Steppenrun.com and we'll be continuing with immunology and we'll be having a look at our resident macrophages and specifically in this video we'll be going in and having a look at Kupfer cells which are our resident macrophages in the liver okay and before we get into it I'd like to make a quick point and what I'd like to say is that when you're studying for these exams or your, your medical exams whether it be a medical school or whether it be your board exams from your USMLE or to um, the different various medical exams that go on throughout the world your main aim and your main focus really should be a real emphasis on understanding because there are so many facts that you have to learn there's so much knowledge that you have to be able to be pretty much recall when you're in the middle of an exam and it is difficult when you're just looking at memorizing 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 it's difficult to memorize so much medicine is such a vast area that it's practically impossible to memorize everything but if you do have a solid grasp of understanding things it does make things a lot easier so in regards to that our main focus on these videos is going to be to tie in as many high yield topics together as possible so when we look at cut for cells we'll also be having a look at how it ties in with the liver and we'll be making clinical correlations with uh, how that relates to the real world how it relates to real life and what you might see in a clinical situation so we'll get like a full picture as well as including all the high yield facts and details that you're going to be able to need to know and remember especially when you're doing exams such as the USMLE it's very multidisciplinary so it's not just a focus on one or two topics it's not a straight factual recall like for example they might give you a question stem which is talking about our uh, physiology and then the answers the multiple choices can be about pharmacology so they're tying together many different topics together and it's it's very tricky unless you have an understanding to get through uh, exams like these with very high scores memorizing is just not going to be enough you also have to have the understanding behind the, the facts that you have in your brain you have to be able to tie things together and once you're able to tie things together it becomes a lot easier to recall facts so we'll get into it and today we're going to be talking about resident macrophages we'll be continuing on and we'll be having a look at cut for cells and their role in the liver I might split this video up into two parts if I feel like it's getting on to be a bit too long so we'll see how it goes and we'll uh, see if I'm gonna split this up into a part one and part two so remember that we said our macrophages they arise under two different states or under two separate requirements for which they're needed in the body and those two states are one your physiological state which gives rise to your resident macrophages and two your pathological state which give rise to macrophages in response to inflammation and infection today we'll have a quick look at our physiological macrophages so we'll go through them from our um, cup for cells to our microglia and I'll show you in the next slide if we can have a brief look at that yeah so you see here remember from our blood vessel we have our monocyte and when we're talking about our physiological macrophages our resident macrophages this monocyte it gives rise to all these all these different types of macrophages which have very vast roles and roles in different roles depending in the area of the body that they end up in so from your monocyte you get your microglia which are your CNS macrophages are present in your brain and spinal cord from the monocyte you also get your alveolar macrophages which is the name states they're present in your lung you also get your mesangial macrophages in or your mes mesangial cells as they're known in your kidney and your osteoclasts in your bone and of course your cut for cells in the liver and this is what we'll be having a look at today our cut for cells so our monocyte it reaches the liver and since we're going to be talking about the liver we may as well remind ourselves quickly of the important structures and features 
of the liver itself so that later we can make our clinical correlation and it all ties in together nicely. So remember that you have your hepatocytes and these hepatocytes are multinucleated and they're organized in such a fashion so that their apical side faces into the bowel canals or the bowel canalculus. Okay, you see this right here is the bowel canals and it drains into your bile duct over here. So remember the apical side of the hepatocyte into the bowel canal into the bile duct and this all flows away from the central vein. Okay, And then on the basolateral aspect of your hepatocyte you have your hepatic, your hepatic sinusoidal endothelial cell which is the endothelial cells right here, the hepatic sinusoidal endothelial cell. And between the hepatocyte and these endothelial cells you have what's known as the perisinusoidal space. Now this perisinusoidal space is also known as the space of DC or the space of dis or space of I'm not really I'm not really sure how to pronounce it but it's the space of DC I've written it down here so you guys can see it so it's between our hepatocytes and the endothelial cells the space of DS and over here we have our portal vein and the hepatic artery and bear in mind your portal vein you should know why it's so big in comparison to everything else it's because the portal vein is part of your hepatic portal system it receives a very large amount of blood from your intestines from the lower one-third of the esophagus to the upper one-third of the anal canal so it receives blood from your small intestines um, blood from your stomach and pancreas and sp specifically it's so that it receives the liver receives all the nutrients from our intestines and our gastrointestinal tract and process them and processes them before they go out into the general circulation so blood from your portal vein flows towards the central vein in the opposite direction of the way that bile is flowing so the bile is flowing in this direction towards the bile duct and the portal vein blood is flowing from the portal vein through the sinusoids towards your central vein So naturally the next question is what about our copper cells? Where are our macrophages, our resident macrophages, our copper cells? Where are they? Well, they line the sinusoid, specifically on the endothelial cell, on your hepatic sinusoidal endothelial cell. And we'll have a better look at that closer picture. So you can see in the next slide, here's your endothelial cell and here's your copper cell it's lining the sinusoid. This is your sinusoid right here. This is your endothelial cell. And your copper cell is lining it right here. Okay. And then in the perisinusoidal space or space of this, you have a stellate cell. The stellate cells. What are the stellate cells? Well, the stellate cells are star-shaped with cytoplasm that is rich in lipid vesicles containing vitamin A and their job is to secrete the main constituent materials of the matrix which include type 3 collagen and ureticulin and these cells are very important in liver regeneration following injury or surgery because they secrete lots of growth factors and in the case of injury they can replace damaged hepatocytes by the secretion of collagen and other structural proteins And in the next slide, we'll be having a look at how the stellate cell connects with our Kupfer cell because they have an important interaction with each other. But we'll get back to that. For the meantime, we'll go back to our Kupfer cell. Remember, our Kupfer cell is lining our sinusoids on the endothelial cells. And this Kupfer cell is our macrophage. And researchers actually found that Kupfer cells have this special receptor which is named the complement receptor of the immunoglobulin family which is also known as CRIG complement receptor of the immunoglobulin family and what these researchers found is that mice without this particular receptor without the CRIG could not clear complement system coated pathogens and they also found the same correlation in humans 
So this copper cell is actually critical for innate immunity because without them you're not able to clear complement system coated pathogens or pathogens that have complements on their surface. And also remember that your uh, liver is part of your reticular endothelial system along with the spleen and the bone marrow so it has a function in cleaning old RBCs and whose job is it to clean up the, those old RBCs in the liver guess who it's your cup for some and um, you're probably thinking why does the cup for cell only clear old RBCs and not new fresh RBCs well the reason is that when an RBC is reaching the end of its life, changes in the membrane allow macrophages, allow our cup for cells to attach and phagocytose the, all, the old RBC. And then remember your hemoglobin molecule is split. The globin chains are reutilized by the liver and the heme is uh, further broken down into iron, which is, al which is also reutilized by the body. And you also get bilirubin. Remember the bilirubin is conjugated to glucuronic acid within the hepatocytes and it's secreted into the bile. Okay, so that was quite a few facts there at once, but um, it's rather important. So remember your cup for cell, it has a role in innate immunity, complement receptor, um, complement system coated pathogens, or complement receptor of the immunoglobulin family, role number one. Role number two to phagocytose old RBCs, okay, and role number three, it has a very important relation with our stellate cell. It's what happens when um, you have ethanol-induced liver injury and chronic alcoholism. The cup for cell activation has a major role in causing damage to the liver, okay. Let's have a look at that. Let's explore it a little bit further to understand what that means. So how does liver damage occur in our alcoholics, our chronic alcoholics? Well, it occurs by two main systems or two main injuries. Your first injury is from direct ethanol damage to your hepatocytes. And the second is actually by activation of Kupfer cells. Okay, so how do these Kupfer cells get activated? What happens is your Kupfer cells, remember, they have CD14 receptors, they're macrophages, and they also have toll like receptors, which are our pathogen recognition receptors, which is the toll like receptor 4. So these receptors on the Kupfer cells, they are activated by endotoxins, specifically lipopolysaccharide or LPS. Now you're probably thinking where does this LPS come from? Well this relates to um, the microflora of an alcoholic. So an alcoholic was when he's ingesting lots of alcohol, lots of ethanol, the ethanol actually disrupts the normal flora of the gut. So when the normal flora of the gut is disturbed you get a high proliferation of our gram-negative bacteria. And these gram-negative bacteria are the ones that have the lipopolysaccharide, or the LPS. That's their characteristic endotoxin. So gram-negative bacteria proliferate in the gut, okay, and the gut also becomes more permeable to them. So those gram-negative bacteria, or, the, or their endotoxin, it passes on to the liver. What happens once it passes on to the liver? Okay, well, it activates our cup for cell through our pathogen recognition receptor, aka our toll like receptor 4, which is one of those pathogen recognition receptors present on our cup for cell, and it also activates the CD14 receptor. And what happens when this cup for cell becomes activated? Once it's activated, it produces tumor necrosis factor alpha and it produces superoxides. Those superoxides and that TNF alpha passes into the space of DES where it activates or, or where it, where it um, enters the stellate cell and activates it. 
and once it's activated, the stellate cell, it undergoes collagen synth synthesis and it causes fibrosis. This fibrosis goes on to eventually cause cirrhosis and you get loss of function in the liver. Okay, I hope that's clear for you guys. Um, you just basically remember that your liver damage occurs one, from your direct ethanol damage and two, from the bacterial endotoxin lipopolysaccharide which activates our cut for cell the cut for cell stimulates our stellate cell and the stellate cell causes fibrosis it stimulates collagen synthesis and that causes fibrosis that fibrosis eventually causes cirrhosis and when you get cirrhosis you get loss of function of the liver okay so it's a downward spiral pretty much but if you remember that our cut for cell just activates our, our stellate cell and the stellate cell produces chemicals which cause our liver to become fibrotic okay I hope that's clear for you guys um, if you if you didn't understand it um, feel free to post a comment or send me a message and uh, I'll, I'll make another video to try and clear that up but I think it should be pretty clear so in the next video we'll also have a look at our microglia and some of our other resident macrophages Okay, so thanks for watching, stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video.